try and stop the train on the tower. It's okay. Wow. It is not a nice day. Not by any means. I'm currently hiding in a, an old mining hut. Um, I'm going to be putting up my tent shortly. I'm going to have, I've built a little cupboard over there to put the camera in because the camera's not waterproof. I'm going to set up the tent. Now, I was going to do a walk through, talk through, but in this weather, I just can't. But I will have my mic on in a minute and hopefully we'll be able to, you'll be able to hear me in the wind because it's heavy rain and heavy wind. I'll get back to you when I start putting the tent up. And more importantly, welcome to MAFT UK. I have no idea if my camera will survive putting this up. I've made a little den for it, but the wind's changed and it's brought the rain straight on it. This is it, nothing I can do now. Everything's gonna get exposed. There is nothing else I can do. Come on, don't be shy. Come on wind, let me do it. There you go, first one. Come on, in you go. This tab is an important tab and I've seen people miss it in the past on other videos for this tent. The second one goes over the top of the first one. Again, that's important because of that tab, and, it, and I will show you that later. I've got to make sure my cover doesn't disappear in the wind. Let's not have a gust of wind now. Right. Best place. There, let's get some bloody pegs in quick. Come here. No. Wanting to fly. <sighs> Trying to find the right orientation. There we go. On the bottom of this tent. You will see me clip in. On some quick release clips. Yeah, these do look a bit fragile to be fair. I will talk about the quality issues. My hands are numb right now. I can't actually feel my fingers anymore. Totally relying on sight because I can't feel. I wonder how this mic bearing up. I actually got a new lavalier mic for it, hoping that that would make a difference. Come on, get your fingers on that.
Come on, baby. Come on. Just for me. Just for now. Come on. There we go. Oh. Oh, the rain's coming down heavy now. <laughs> go away, Gus. Oh, here we go. This is what it's all about. This is it. This is it being tested for real. Is it a four season tent? We'll soon bloody know, won't we? must admit it didn't go up too bad couple of errors couple of issues I did make some mods to this tent before I came out I'll explain all about that later but now it's time to get in and get out of this weather a uh, couple of things I might just do I've got extra pegs I always have extra pegs on the prevailing wind side to may just do something that's not supposed to happen but I'll do it anyhow and that is I get where the snow skirt is. They may rip off, they may pull out. I don't know. Yeah, just a little bit uneven where the ground's slightly uneven here. It's probably the best place for them. Despite whatever you do. Unless you're actually on a campsite, you're rarely going to get somewhere which is dead flat and perfect pitch. They're, you know, those places are far and few between, so you have to make do with what you got. And if a tent's got a little bit of adjustability, brilliant. Right, let's get in. Make sure you shake everything off before you do, because it's absolutely saturated. Let's get in. Oh shit, look at that. The tent has collapsed. Straight away, it's collapsed. Please tell me we got that on. And then it's popped back up again. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I know I've got stuff all over the camera. Is this tent a four season tent? Not on your life already. It's blown over in, in a moderate wind. I've got a wind speed thing out and I'll get that out in a minute. Um, not too much water in here at the moment, so it's not too bad. So I can mop it up with a couple of tissues, but let me clean the camera up and then we'll carry on. Oh, my word. Well, I think I can turn off this mic now. It's still working, let's see. That will give me some idea of how long, actually, the whole thing is taking. 33 minutes from turning this mic on when I was down, in, down there in the shelter to having this been sat in the tent. But I wouldn't say in the drive because of... This type of tent, I'm going to try and keep cleaning that lens because of this type of tent, the uh, inner pitch first nightmare. Uh, I am pretty moist to say the least. But let's hope that this microphone did its job. It was in a wet bag and that one there, let's hope it did its job. And that you can hear what I was doing and the agony that I was going through. My, I'm just about starting to feel my fingers now. I 
don't think I don't think I'm gonna make the night. I got a sneaky suspicion that this tent is gonna break and it's not gonna make it. But do you know what? Even though I paid, I bought I bought the tent myself, so I never got given it. But I don't mind if, if it breaks, it breaks. The, the thing is, it's all about experimenting and finding out for yourself, isn't it? You can't always take people's word for it when they tell you. This is actually is rated one of the top 10 um, budget uh, four season tents. Well, I'm, that's not the heaviest of storms out there by far, and it's not coping with it very well at all. So my current opinion of this tent is not very good at all. very good at all. I sort of need to get a bit of air in here I think because everything's steaming up. So. Oh you're kidding. Oh, there's one. So you've got like a no seams mesh. I'll show you I'll show you everything later. Um, you've got like a no seams mesh and a double door. And that's what people how they class this as a as a four season tent you know with these with these full news with removable zip, zipper flies you know like this here so you've got the inner door but it's got a, like a double layer to it and that they say because of that you can use this tent in the winter it's got a snow skirt around it you know, and a skirt so you can pack the snow on it so if it's not windy and it's not rainy then it's not snowing it's probably a good tent. <laughs> but if it's doing any of those other ones, it isn't. At this moment, I haven't, I haven't cooled down yet, but very shortly I'll start to cool. And I'll have to get out of this wet clothes. I'm not, my trousers aren't wet, my t-shirts have got a bit of wet on it, but here we go again. I'm gonna spend the night holding up this tent thing. Yeah, that door just ripped open on its own. <laughs> this is what you've got to do. Hey, God, come on, stay up, tripod. If you don't do this, what's the point? You might as well have a bit of fun, aren't you? Come on. Did that zip break? Oh, I'm going home. No, it just came under. Put your hands up if you think this is going to end in tears. Right. I need to get some my admin going. I need to get sorted. I need to get at least attempt to get my bed up. I, I need to get off the ground. I need to insulate myself from the ground. So I've got to get my air bed up. Um, I don't need to put air into my sleeping bag because it's not it's not one of those that needs that. But uh, this could, I'm, I'm, I'm dubious. I'm dubious whether to actually kick it out because I don't think this tent has it. It's not supported enough. Even with the extra supports that I put in, it's not holding its own. It's not standing up in the wind. And uh, well, we can. If a pole goes, that's it. We're done, aren't we? Game over. Down a long path, I came up between um, some mines. I've actually been here before, but I never stopped. This was, um, I'm at Weatherlam, at the base of Weatherlam, and, and I'm literally on the beginning of the steel blade. That's where I am right now. And if you don't know what that is, have a look at Weatherlam steel blade in my last video. For, um, I think it's a walk past history, that one's called. A walk past history. It's a good video, actually. Starts off with me at work and ends up with me having fun up on top of Coniston at the back of Lever Water. So what should we do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have a Brewdog IPA. 
because I've earned the bugger. Cheers, everyone. You can see the steam coming off me, can't you? It's steaming up in here. I may just keep everything on then. If it's gonna, if I'm gonna dry it, if I'm still warm, I'm drying it, then I'll keep everything on. But I do have some warm clothes to put on. I don't want to put it all on and get it all wet. Keep it maybe just for sleeping in. I don't like the way the water drips off that door. It's not, it's not coming in. The rain's not coming in on the tent. That's one thing it's not doing. It's not leaking. But it's the water that came on here is still dripping into the doorway, and I can't dry that off. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think I am going to get my air bed up because my ass is feeling the cold. Although, saying that, I do have, I do have a secret weapon. I can't put this beard down because it'll blow over. I'm sure it will. And it's in here. Things should always have two uses. Now, I did anticipate the fact that I may end up cooking inside the tent. Even though I've got two porches, I've got one behind me, one that way. And you, but as you can see, they're not working very well. I brought my gas with me this time, and pure, the only reason I've done that is I wasn't confident with the tent. And I don't want a tent to collapse on me like it is doing when I've got a Trangier going. At least with a gas, I can just quickly off within a second. So, but a Trangier, I can't do that so easy, so I've done that. So because I may have cooked in the tent, I brought my um, welding mat, a little tiny welding mat. And as some of you will already know, if you haven't seen that before, if you've seen that before, it's insulated. And if it's insulated, that means you can put your arse on it and it'll keep your arse warm. So that's what I'm going to do. Which was a good idea because I was sat in a puddle of water. No wonder I was feeling a bit cold. I'm coming off the coat. Ah, there we are. Well, that'll insulate that now. I'll get some more tissues out all over the place. There's that many tissues around here now. It looks like a, a path in the Lake District where women go and pee everywhere. We need tissues. Don't, I don't mind them pee. Everyone's got to pee, but bring tissue on with you. What's the matter with you? Just put it in a bag. Don't say it's biodegradable because the next person behind you is only an hour away or 10 minutes away. I want to see your pissy tissues. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort me up in out. I'm going to give it a go. It's a shame I couldn't actually show you in detail parts of this tent, but the reasons are more than obvious. Here we go. That door's trying to open. Oh, there goes the camera. <laughs> so far, this tent is an almighty fail. Really, really nice. I am starting to chill now. The temperature's going down. I've got the feeling back in my fingers, which is good. If the tent does collapse, all I will simply do is put my waterproofs on, my head torch, just and um, battle pack everything. I'll just stuff everything in, in the Bergen. And that's it, that's all I'll do, because if it goes, it goes. And what I've done, I've intentionally come up the uh, I've intentionally come up the hard way up through the quarry so as I can take the easy route back which is just along the path there. Get off! It's useless! This tent is useless in the wind! You need a thousand more pegs for it! It's useless! <laughs> I'm risking it putting the camera there aren't I? Because I know it's going to come over in a minute. Anyway, just a quick update. I have put my bed up now. Um, I've comfort, um, seated some at Comfort Deluxe. Uh, extra long so I've got that in it fits perfect so it's, it's fine for that I've got my sleeping bag out now I am going to do a review on the sleeping bag but I've had one night sleep in it so far which isn't really a lot but this is it this is this is the sleeping bag there and it was a budget one again budget and, and I don't mind trying budget gear out because I know the adverts are annoying right, on YouTube the adverts are annoying but the money I make on those adverts and it's not a lot it's like it's only what 25 Thirty dollars a month. Now, but that after a couple of months, I can go and buy something to test, and that's what I do. And if you've got any suggestions that you would like me to test for you, if you've seen something that you would uh, like to see tested, 
drop me an email, drop me a note, and I will do what I can. But bear in mind, once I've saved up enough money from the adverts, I can then go and do it. So you have to, you have, you have to be patient with that one. Anyway, see the summit pillow. I wish I'd gotten the bigger one. This was a medium size or small one, but I wish I'd got the bigger one. Yeah, there's, there's two valves. There's the big valve, the dump air back valve, which lets you dump everything out, and then there's the um, smaller valve, which lets you inflate without deflation. I always pull the wrong one out first. So look now. There we are. One pillow. There you go. Medium pillow. Is it medium? Whatever it is. I do like that bit. You get your head right in there. It's nice. Anyway, moving on. Uh, now then, top tip. If you have tissues with you, you will find that you can wring them out and use them as a sponge. Now you can simply carry a sponge if you want to. Sponge is handy to have, especially for washing your pots and everything. But if you if you just got tissues, make sure you get some decent ones that don't degrade. You know, like toilet paper. Um, if you're not good at using toilet paper, but a good clump of tissue like that will dry out all the water in here very quickly, and you simply. I was like, you can't see me, but I am wringing it out. Just bring it back in, and mop it up again. Don't tell Karen, but I nicked her hat. She doesn't know I've, I've nicked her hat, and if she finds out I've brought it camping, she'll never wear it again. It's a nice hat. It's very great for sleeping in. In fact, I may just keep it on because it's quite nice. The trick with being out in the winter in the rain in the UK is having a positive attitude. <laughs> it's always going to be difficult in the rain and you will never stay dry. If you're walking in the rain for days and days and days, you're never going to stay dry. So you try and have dry kit that you only put on when you go to bed. That is very, very important very very important even if you have to get up in the morning and put your wet stuff back on that's what you have to do that is what you have to do do not put or keep your dry stuff on and go tabbing in that and an hour later it's all raining again and you're getting soaked again and now you have two lots of wet no, you're screwed because you can't stay warm when you go to sleep you won't have a decent night's sleep and what despite what anybody tells you I'm telling you straight now wearing wet clothes to bed will not dry while you're asleep that is absolute bollocks and if anyone's ever told you that it's bollocks I learned that the hard way when people used to tell me that in the military and you get in your sleeping bag wet and you think I'll dry whilst I'm asleep no you don't what happens is your body temperature drops and you wake up every 15 minutes shivering like a good in that's what really happens and nothing dries putting wet socks under your armpits does not work it means you've got cold armpits for the entire night that's the facts that's the truth don't listen to anybody when they tell you yeah, it really does work no it really don't <laughs> 30 years of experience will tell you it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, staying positive, getting on with your admin, keeping busy, those are the things to do. We know this is gonna fail, don't we? We know it's already failed. It's not a four season tent, you know that, I know that. It's bollocks, it may pretend to look like one, but it fucking isn't one. Nope. Not even close to being a four season tent. But what I will do later on is uh, explain how the manufacturers can call this a four season tent. Now what I may have to do, if I can't actually um, do it in, in this weather, because I can't film outside the tent, it's just not, that's a no, no go. What I may have to do is, uh, go home and do it of an evening or um, take a picture of stuff and then show you 
but I, some of it I can do on the inside. Some of so it. I'm being told that the weather forecast is uh, rain, 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 all the way to tomorrow we'll be packing up in the rain, so what? Um, but the wind speed is currently 20 miles an hour. That's down in Coniston, and uh, tomorrow it'll be 20 miles an hour down in Coniston. Obviously, we're a little bit exposed up here. We're a good couple hundred feet up off the ground, so I would say we're probably getting gusts at around 40 miles an hour. That's what I would say. Now, I do have a wind speed monitor. I do. I am able to check the wind speed later and the temperature, but uh, that if the tent was going to have some sort of balls about it and, have, and you know, stand up to what it needed to stand up to, then I probably would have done that. But the fact remains that it's it's already failed as a four-season tent. It's it hasn't got it. It's just no. So if it if it folds over in a twenty mile an hour wind, then no, no, absolutely not. No, it's waterproof though. I will give it that. If the flat, that the material itself is waterproof. There's no rain coming in. Another good blast of wind coming. So hold on to your horses. Here we go again. Just like I said. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh... See, that's a 20 mile an hour wind. That's 20. That's 20 mile an hour wind. But it's gusting a bit. Just getting over that. <clears throat> I must say a big hello to the ladies that I met on the way up the hill. Um, they asked me what I was doing. And I said, I'm going camping for this evening. And I'm going to test out a tent. And I'm going to try it out. So, hello. <laughs> so, hello ladies. Yeah, I got up here. Yes, it's windy. Yes, it's rainy and it's not very nice at all. However, nice to have met you all and I hope you enjoyed your walk. Bye-bye. The tent has been up an hour and the, the seam, the tape seams are already starting to come apart there, look, with the bending of the tent. So one hour and the tape seams are coming away already. <laughs> this tent cannot stay up on on its own. It is incapable of staying up on its own. The first gust and it just blows over. And there is no way this tent is going to survive the night. The seams are coming apart. It's. I'm doing my best, but. Come. I'm trying to do these bows up again to keep coming undone. I don't want to put a knot on them. If I put a knot on them, I can't. I won't be able to undo them. There. I'm trying to steady those poles up to stop them from coming apart. But if you look, the, the, the tape seems coming away and there's water coming through. So it's not even staying waterproof now. This, this tent's just not going to make it. It's not going to make it. I'm at a stage now where um, I have to decide whether I'm going to stick this out or sack it. Now I've done everything I can and more to keep this baby going and I must admit I'm, I'm absolutely, totally not confident with it whatsoever. There is definitely, definitely a huge fail. This tent is no good whatsoever, um, especially in a storm and it's supposed to be a four season tent which will ride a storm. This isn't a necessarily a huge storm. It's not your 80 mile an hour wind storm. It's just a 40 mile an hour wind storm with heavy rain. That's all it is. And it's not doing very well at all. Um, so I think I've answered all the questions I need to ask about this tent right now. Is it worth trying to stay in this tent just to prove a point? No, not really. Am I stupid enough to do it? Yeah, probably. Um, Will I regret it? Yeah, hang on, I've got water coming down on the inside of the tent here now. That would have been a decider straight there, because you're going home, aren't you? Because it's not going to stop raining. The rain's coming in, and it's staying in, and it's not going away. So if you, uh, if you, if you, if you try and stick it out, and, and you're just going to get wet. What? And up on this mountainside, you get exposed to this weather, a couple hours in it, exposed, piss wet through. You won't last much longer than that.
So you don't mind putting the wet gear on to get back down again because as soon as you start moving, as soon as you start working, your body temperature rises and you'll be fine. You just gotta keep pushing. But it's it's to see it is a decision. I have to make a decision, I have to make it now. But I know what's the the right thing to do is because I've already I already know the answers to the questions that I've asked myself, the right thing to do is to go home. This not necessarily the stupid thing to do, or the or the manly thing to do is to stick it out. Yep, yeah, well. But when your tape seems to coming away after an hour, that's not a good sign, is it? I, I think I was asked a question. I think the question was asked by a Welsh boy seven. Um, my opinion of this tent because he has one. Um, well, you've got my opinion. Sorry, mate. I hope you feel the same because you never actually let on what you thought of the tent. So I think it's shit. What do you think, Welsh boy seven? What do you think? If it bends over one more time, collapses on me one more time, that's it, I'm going to sack it. But I mean, it's got well, the rain has stopped, like but the wind hasn't. That's a steel blade there. This is where I am. is where my tent was because it's just bent over double twice on me in this wind this tent will not make it so between the showers which are just about to come on me again I'm getting the hell out of here it's actually a little bit darker than it appears on the camera but I'm back, I'm down just before dark so anyway, absolutely epic fell. Is that a four season tent? No, I don't even think it's a three. Let's get back, let's analyse what went wrong. If you don't test something, if you don't trial something then you can potentially put yourself in quite a lot of risk and that's what I always try to avoid doing. Now I'm going to take you back now, a good three months ago when I actually purchased this tent. Now I am currently sat in my man cave inside the tent. Now I did this that then purely and simply to have a look at it to see what I thought of it and as I was looking through the tent initially it looked all right I didn't have a problem uh, I'll, I'll show you some of the good features in a minute but I looked at it and thought yeah it's actually it's actually quite good I'm really surprised at the quality of this but as I was looking and as I was going over the tent, I thought to myself, something's not quite right. It's looking like it's good, but it's feeling like it's rubbish. And I wasn't happy. Certain things were, were, um, were, were, were barking at me, shouting at me, screaming at me. And I did something that I never, ever said I would do. And that is, I actually seam sealed certain parts of the tent, especially the very top, because I didn't like the look of the way it was made. I added extra guys where uh, I thought they should be guys, but when you look at how they're constructed, they couldn't possibly be guys because the guy attachment points because they are nowhere near strong enough to support it. So I don't even know what they're for. I, I couldn't even tell you what they're for, but uh, there was just things like that. I, the, the size of the tent, the height of the tent, there wasn't enough support in there. I could have done with another pole or something else to to strengthen it. It's not there things were going wrong with it the alarm bells were starting to ring and I thought to myself you know what before I take this out to actually use it real time to go somewhere where I'm going to be out on a limb I'm going to test it and I needed to find the right time to do that and that's why I did what I did just then I purposely went out knowing too well that there's a good chance that this tent would fail and it did before we go any further let's have a look at some of the good points. Let's have a look at what made me think it was a good four season tent. Let's have a look at how it all goes together and then let's have a look when my alarm bell started to ring and when things started to turn and tables started to change and I thought to myself, you know what? I don't think this is. I don't think it's got it. So let's do that, shall we? Starting with the inner. 
So let's have a look from the inside. Well, as you can see, it's a very high bathtub. So you've got plenty of protection there from height wise. That's a good 150, 67 inch bathtub there. You've got corner pockets. And yes, everything is double stitched. So from a bathtub point of view, everything appears to be in good nick. Now look at this big yellow wall here. The first vent you get is there. Underneath that, what that is, is a little shelf. So here's your first vent. In fact, with all the doors closed, that is your only vent up there. Now, this is how they get around the four season tent argument. You see there that everything is yellow. So big second door, it's all yellow. But, behind it is mesh. So now what they say is that you can use it in the summer because it's well ventilated. So we've got summer ticked off. One hand operation on the zip, which is good. I like that. But fully enclosed. So you can class this as a winter tent because it can be fully enclosed with this lining, which keeps you warmer. Hmm. Now we'll start with the top and work our way down. Now remember I did mention about a tab. I guess that tab should be on that one. But it's on that one for today. I don't care. Now notice how easy that is to move. That doesn't help. Notice how easy that is to move. It would be better if they were locked in together. That would give you a bit more stability, wouldn't it? But that's another modification you've got to make. So, working our way down. Nothing in the middle between the tent. Nothing at all. That could have had another guide point there, couldn't it? Now let's get down to our guide points. There was direct stitching through. So potentially you could have water ingress at that point. The strap comes down to this quick release clip. Your pole sits in there, as you can see, like so. And then that goes over to, goes through there. And that's how the system is set up. So let's have a look at this clip in a little bit more detail. That bar in there is your strength and, and the key to this success of that clip so if that bar is not very thick that that's a very big potential snap there and I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about that in a minute and, and the type of webbing we got here is very lightweight and I don't dispute that it's not strong enough to support the weight in fact I'm, I'm more than confident it will it's it's not a bad piece of webbing to be fair but it is very thin and again later on we'll see We'll see about that, and again later on we'll see what happens at, at this location. We have four peg out points, exactly the same on each corner, the same design, which you would think was absolutely fine. I just think, there's for a winter tent, you would need intermittent ones, so I'd, I'd expect to see one there, I'd expect to see one there, and at the back in the middle and on the far end, that's what I would expect, to make sure this thing is, is well hunkered down. I would also expect to see some form of clamp, clip or brace here instead of this. Now it is true, you can literally tie, you can tie that yourself. So you could just put a bowl around there to strengthen that. But again now, you're, you're working with a material, you're working with an item which isn't what it's supposed to be. That is, is, is not supposed to be like, that's not, you can see it's not stable, it's not steady enough. Let's put the fly over the top and have a look at that, shall we? Well, roughly line it up, best you can. Follow it down the bottom, and when you get down to here, you will come across your 
quick release clip. Now, let me get some sort of background to that. Again, look how thin, look how thin that is. You're relying on everything, a lot of pressure to be taken by that very thin clip. It's not very strong at all. Um, yeah, and, and I want you to note now, you see the position of this tab here. Just look where it is. Look at that position of that tab. So the idea is to get that clip, clip it into the one that's already there. Now, I don't pull it tight yet, but you do this now to all four. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to come back to this location. With your peg firmly in place, you can now tighten up the strap, pull it nice and tight, and give it a bit of tension on your tent. The only trouble is, this webbing is so thin and soft and supple that the first blow, I, can't, I won't be able to simulate it because it's not wet. I won't be able to simulate it, I bet I can't simulate it, but what was happening yesterday was they were just pulling, oh no, it's not going to happen now, they were just pulling loose again, oh there we go, how easy that was, so just a gentle bit of movement on that, and it just released, and that all, every single one of those tabs ended up back there, making that all loose and you constantly had to go out tighten it back up again and 10 minutes later again it was it was falling free like that it was doing me knackers in that system does work but it's the wrong webbing it doesn't hold the clip and the webbing are, don't work together very well they're, they're, they're not they're too slippy it slips and it, what does work to a degree the potentials are tugging that too hard would quite easily snap that on a winter week you know on a winter day when it's nice brittle cold and really really cold you know freezing you pull you jank that too sharp snap that's gonna snap off so your, your, your basic support for the tent for your fly isn't working very well that's one of the issues that I noticed yesterday let's go back up the tent again now. and I want to point out something else so we have our door retainer there okay clearly a door retainer it's not meant for support now then let's move up one and here we go and this is where I had sort of a bit of a confusion really because what's that supposed to be is that a is that a support this confused me a little bit What's that supposed to be? Is it a support for the tent? It doesn't look like one. It looks like a, a door tab. But that's it's not a door tab. So what is that? It's really poorly made. You can see I actually put a little bit of stitching in there myself because that tab only goes halfway through. So it's only picked up by one lot of stitching. It doesn't go all the way. So what is that? It can't be a a support for the tent can it? it can't be a, a guy for the tent because what they've done for guys for this tent has made them look like that now that's a guy for a tent that looks right doesn't it got direction you know where it's, which way it's supposed to be pointing everything there seems right let's look at another one same one again it's only stitched into one lot of the stitching, so I, I reinforced it myself and then tape seamed it. It's not right, that is it? That's weak. I'm surprised I just didn't pull out yesterday. Right, one more support that you would have seen me try and do is underneath the flight. Now, one of your last remaining supports for this tent is this configuration here where you try and maybe wrap it round once and then give yourself a bow to, to, to fix the fly to the inner now already i don't know if you can see but these tape seams are coming off it's only been out the door once look at that 
Can you see that? That tape seems come off. That's come off. That was just two hours. That water was coming through there, dripping down onto here and then coming onto here. So it was starting to fail within just a couple hours. On the inside there, there's one more of these pegs. So you can actually use this to, to keep now your fly further away. So you've got two. So where you should have one here as well, you've only got you've got one here. So it does actually come with that one, but it's hidden away under this and you don't see it. And this this thing doesn't roll up. Look. That doesn't roll up at all. Because only when you start messing with it, you actually find this and you go, oh, there's one there. So even though I pegged that out, I didn't have any problems on this elevation. By having that main guy there and using the one down below, that side isn't too bad. But the porch isn't able to hold itself at all. There's just no way, there's no strength in it. You're relying upon one peg, one peg only to hold an entire porch out. And that's where the problem lies because when the wind changes or turns and hits onto it, which it did for me yesterday, the whole thing just pulls over and collapses in your face. And that's the problem. Just you've got enough guys on that side, but you have nothing here. These aren't strong enough, and will probably and, and basically nearly ripped out. And in fact, let's go and check, see if I've got any damage on the others. Someone's going on there. I think that maybe just bad stitching from me. Well, they seem to have survived. Now I don't think I've been too unfair with this. I think I've given it every opportunity to go out there and prove itself. I've done something I normally wouldn't do, which is enhance it by adding um, and reinforcing the guys because because those four outer larger those, those four upper guys these do not come with the tent you only get two I've seam sealed it I've reinforced the stitching I've done everything I possibly can within reason to try and give that tent the best chance it had of staying up whilst it was out unfortunately my conclusions and they are my conclusions it's my opinion only that this may look the part initially but it certainly isn't and if you're even contemplating at buying a four season tent then you are going to have to go with the brand names I don't think a good budget four season tent actually exists I sort of knew that I think you know that already too but you just sort of hope maybe you can do something to make it something stronger and well if you're doing that you shouldn't be buying it I don't recommend you buy this tent if you're going anywhere higher than a campsite that is not the tent for you in fact I wouldn't even use it in a campsite if it can't take a 25 20 mile an hour wind with a gust up to 40 and if it, if it folds up that and it's not worth having it's because that's not uncommon and not crazy wind in the UK. Uh, the tape seams came apart within an hour of it being erected. So again, that's not good enough. Uh, overall, it's performed really bad. And for all of those of you who have already got one, yeah, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Don't take it up on the hills if you never have before. Excuse me, you will regret it. I can't say any more. I think I've done slagging that tent off. <laughs> the gear top, four season, two person tent. My rating for this tent is a massive shite. <laughs> See you next time. Bye bye.